I'm Chris Berman. Well, let's get straight to the action. In our first game this week, we had the Chargers come away with a decisive 10-point win. The Steelers won this contest, but will stay at the third place in the AFC North. In an AFC South matchup, we had the Jaguars pick up their sixth win of the year. Freddie Mitchell stepped it up this week and gave his team some added firepower for the win. Warwick, well done. Ate up over 100 yards on the ground and helped his Falcons beat the Browns. We had a big injury in this one, and Trey has the lowdown for us. Trey? All right, Boomer, thanks. In front of you, we've got the AFC Infirmary Report. And as you can see, they were hit hard this week. James Mungro is probably the one that most leaps out at you. Doctors confirming the worst this week, a torn hamstring. And that'll put him out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. In front of you, we've got the NFC list. And as you can see, they could form their own mash unit. Michael Vick won't see action for a while, so this offense is going to have to make do without him. Broken ribs severely hampering his mobility. They'll keep him out for the rest of the regular season. There's a chance, however, they'll get him back for the playoffs. So that'll do it for now. Boomer, back to you. Raiders, Redskins. Kerry Collins in the red zone at the 14. He calls the signals and buys time with a quick rollout. Now on the move again, kind of flings it. Oh, man, got the two feet in touchdown. The Raiders win this one by the final score of 28 to 21. In the Mile High City of Denver, we had the Broncos fall by 10 points. Up in Ford Field, we had the Lions walk away with a six point victory. The Rams got 300 plus yards from their offense in their victory at Tempe, Arizona. The Bengals won on the road and will now head home to meet the Broncos. The Bills won this contest, but will stay at the second place in the AFC East. Seahawks, 49ers. Sean Alexander is such a tough runner. Now split in the backfield at the 35 yard line and look at him stiff arm that defender and it opens up the hole for a touchdown. The Seahawks win this one by the final score of 20 to 10. In a long-standing AFC rivalry, we had the Titans pick up win number seven. Ryan Erlocker had a stellar game, but all said and done, his performance wasn't enough to lift his team to a victory. Chris Chambers pulled down 100-plus receiving yards and helped his Dolphins beat the Jets. And in our final game, we had the Vikings come away victorious. So let's change things up a bit and turn to a guy that's had his eye on the college game, and that's our own Mel Kuyper Jr. He joins us now. Mel, your work never ends, I know. Believe me, I know better than anybody else. But it's never too early to start thinking about next year's draft, is it? Never too early indeed. And now that, for the most part, the regular season in college football is behind us, we can really start looking back at the guys that have impressed me the most across college campuses this year. Home is a guy right off the bat that's really impressed me thus far. 6'1", 196, out of Florida State. And I really think that when you're an NFL scout and you're looking for guys that have got the potential to be a franchise back at the next level, this is the kind of guy you look for. I really like him. Hunt is another guy that I truly believe will be a frontline NFL starter somewhere down the line. The way he's performed this year makes me believe that his stock is really rising in NFL circles. So that'll do it for now, but you can guarantee that the big board is going to see a lot of risers and fallers between now and April. So another week in the books here on ESPN, but what do you say we hand out a few game balls before we go? Here's my prime time players. That'll do it, sports fans. I'm Chris Berman, and thanks so much for joining us here in the Bristol studios. We'll see you next week right here on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.